Outrage is mounting over a next decision to honor Oscar Lopez Rivera, the former leader of a Puerto Rican nationalist terror group that was responsible for more than 100 bombings in the 1970s and 80s. And while organizers say that the former prisoner is now just a participant in this weekend's Puerto Rican Day Parade, others believe that the damage is already done and will likely be worse. Trey Gal Trace Gallagher joins me now with more on this from our West Coast newsroom. Hi, Trace. Hi, Martha. Oscar Lopez Rivera is a Puerto Rican nationalist who moved to the U.S. when he was 14 and later became convinced that Puerto Rico was a U.S. colony. Lopez Rivera then became leader of FALN, a Spanish acronym that translates to Armed Forces of National Liberation, a terror group that fought for the independence of Puerto Rico and in the 1970s and 80s was behind more than 100 bombings in New York, Chicago, and D.C. Those attacks killed six and injured hundreds, including several police officers. The deadliest being the 1975 bombing of Francis Tavern in New York's financial district. That killed four and injured 60. Lopez Rivera was never convicted of killing or injuring anyone. He was convicted of conspiring to overthrow the U.S. government and explosives were found in an apartment linked to him. Those who investigated the tavern bombing say Lopez Rivera was behind it. Listen. It is said that he is a freedom fighter, that he is a leader for, for independence in Puerto Rico. He is not that. Uh, he is a terrorist, as surely as Obama, Osama bin Laden or Timothy McVeigh. In 1999, Lopez Rivera refused to accept President Clinton's commutation unless other FALN members were also set free. And before he accepted President Obama's commutation back in January, Lopez Rivera made it clear he had no remorse, which infuriates Joseph Conner, whose dad was killed in the tavern bombing. Listen to him. I hear, well, Oscar never hurt anybody. Well, when you take those words for verbatim, it means that my father was nobody because he did hurt people. He was convicted of being a leader of a conspiracy. And when it was announced that Lopez Rivera would be honored at the Puerto Rican Day Parade, several sponsors and floats pulled out. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, New York Police Commissioner James O'Neill, and New York Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer refused to march. And we should note that while parade organizers say Lopez Rivera will not be honored during the parade, the Speaker of the New York City Council still says he will be honored. Yeah. Martha. All right, Trace, thank you so much. Joining me now are two of the men whose lives were deeply and tragically affected by Oscar Lopez Rivera. Richard Pastorella, former NYPD bomb squad detective, injured in one of those blasts, and Joseph Connor, who you just saw in the piece who lost his father, to an FALN terror attack in New York City's Francis Tavern. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, it's good to have both of you here. Gentlemen, you and I have spoken before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Pastorella, thank you for being here uh, tonight. You know, in, in just a very brief version, you, you went over to dismantle a bomb after helping some of your fellow officers who had been hit by a bomb, and you lost quite a lot, didn't you, sir? I did. On the uh, evening of uh, December 31st, 1982, New Year's Eve night, all, most officers were at Times Square, of course, being New Year's, and we were very short-staffed. I, myself, assigned to the bomb squad as a bomb technician. I was the junior man in the office. Most of the senior men had off. I had a partner with me, a dog handler, Anthony Seft, and uh, we had received a call that a bomb had exploded at 26 Federal Plaza, the FBI office in Manhattan. We responded there, and Virtually every window in the back of the building had been blown out. There was shards of glass everywhere. And because of that, we had a bomb canine with us, and we decided not to use the dog, fearing that the dog would have its paws lacerated by the glass. So Anthony and I uh, decided to do a manual search of the area. When we were doing that, we heard an explosion we didn't know from what direction, but we were informed by police radio that an officer was down at one police plaza. Realizing that we had a physical injury, we responded there. And when we approached the scene there, I could see that there was an officer prone on the ground in a large pool of blood. There were two other emergency yeah. service officers. 
uh, and assisting. then you went over to another area after that. I'm sorry to move you along, but I want to I want to just explain what happened to you. And then the uh, bomb went off um, when you were nearby, and you saved some 30 people that you cleared from that area. Correct? Yes, that's true. Uh, one of the commodities we don't have is time. Yeah. We don't know how much time is built into the bomb, but they were uh, Asian people. Uh, wandering around in the area in the vicinity of two live explosives. And we decided to move them back, get them out of the way, and we had literally had to pick some people up and take them to a safe distance. Get them out of the way. And uh, I went to explore, to examine the paper bag that the dog indicated on that contained explosives, and as I reached out for it, it exploded in my face. Sir. How do you feel about the fact that this man, who was finally released from prison, um, is now going to be marching in this parade in New York City? And it, despite the fact that they say he won't be officially honored, you can bet there are going to be a lot of people there just to see him and to honor him. Your thoughts quickly, and then we're going to get some friend Joe here. Yeah, that's uh, that's a, unfortunately a fact. Yeah. Uh, although they say he's not being honored, he is. He's receiving an award as a national hero of Puerto Rico. I for the life of me, can't understand how he's a national hero. He's been in prison for 35 years for sedition against the United States. Yeah, and he has said he wants to see his grandchildren. I know that you said you have never been able to see visually because you lost your sight in that bomb, your own grandchildren, um, which is a, a travesty that it goes back to this man. Joe, you were having lunch with your family in Francis Tavern, a birthday celebration, when uh, this man, and by extension, the people who put those bombs there, Changed your life. Yeah, my father was having lunch with clients and they walked a bomb in, they set it down behind this table and they blew him up. Um, they killed four. He was uh, 33 years old? He was 33 old. years old. We were going to be celebrating my ninth birthday and my brother's 11th that night and um, he never got to see, see his grandchildren either. And um, I, I empathize with kids who can't see their grandparents or their parents, um, but my father didn't cause it. Lopez and his group caused it. Yeah, I mean, people forget what it was like in those days in New York City. Bombs going off all the time. Now we think about ISIS, we look at the uh, the terror that they wreak, but that was happening in this country, and it was happening largely because of the FALN yes. and because of, of Lopez, and now he's going to be honored this yeah. weekend. Look, Final thought, Joe. Look, Lo Lopez is being honored as a, as a hero, but aside from being a terrorist, what did Oscar Lopez ever do to push the independence for Puerto Rico. Mm. Only 5% of Puerto Ricans have ever wanted independence. 70% uh, will vote uh, to become a state. So I want Vivarito and the rest of the mayor to explain what did Lopez ever do to get an award for freedom if not being a terrorist? And I want to hear an answer. Real There's no answer city. to it. Uh, there who are. should be honored. Absolutely. Officer Angel um, Pogi. Mr. Castrella is one of them yes. uh, who served this city in a very uh, strong way and kept a lot of people safe. And, sir, you're a hero to us. And yes, we thank you is. both for being here today. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. So the quote of the night when we come.